Before we launch our first instance, I want to address something that you might be wondering about. What about auto scaling? Auto scaling automatically launches instances for us, so we don't have to do it manually. We are going to be making heavy use of auto scaling just a bit later in the course, but I want to start simple because if you don't know how to launch an instance into a particular subnet, you might have a difficult time configuring auto scaling. In this demo, we're going to launch an instance into the public subnet in zone US East 1B, which has a CIDR block of 10.0.11.0 24. We're then going to allocate an elastic IP address and associate it with the instance. By the way, if you're concerned about ongoing charges, don't worry because I'm going to show you how to terminate the instance as well. Please open up the terminal where you have the AWS CLI configured and let's get started. To launch instances into public subnet B and private subnet B, you're going to need these subnet identifiers. So let's start with public subnet B. An easy way to use the CLI to get the identifier for public subnet B is to search by its CIDR block, which is 10.0.11.0/24. So we're going to do an AWS EC2 describe dash subnets, and we're going to use this filters flag to filter this particular CIDR. Now, hidden among all of this messy JSON output is the subnet ID. So we're going to go ahead and copy this subnet ID to the clipboard here. Next, we need to launch an instance into this subnet. To do that, we're going to do an AWS EC2 run dash instances dash dash the image ID. And I need to specify an Amazon machine image or AMI here. I've already picked one of the Amazon Linux 2 images. So I'm going to put that right here. Now, if you're in US East 1, you can use the same AMI. But if you are in a different region, then you'll need to find the appropriate image ID for that region. The particular image doesn't really matter here because we're just interested in launching an instance and we're going to terminate it before we conclude the lesson. All that matters here is that you specify a valid AMI. Next, we need to specify the subnet ID. So we're going to do dash dash subnet dash ID. And then I actually already have the subnet ID in here. All right, next we'll specify the instance type dash dash instance dash type t3.micro. Finally, if you want to log into the instance, and I'm assuming you've specified a Linux AMI here, you can optionally specify your SSH key pair using dash dash key dash name and then the name of the key pair. I'm not going to be logging into this instance because I'm just going to terminate it in a moment, but I'm showing you this just in case you want to keep the instance and play around with it. Now, before we run this, I want to show you one more parameter that we are not going to use, but I want to show it to you regardless, and it's a long one. Dash dash associate dash public dash IP dash address. This would cause EC2 to associate a temporary public IP address with this instance. I say temporary because you lose this address once the instance is stopped. In many cases, that is not desirable and you want a persistent public IP address, which is what an elastic IP address is. So in a moment, I'm going to show you how to associate an elastic IP address with the instance. So let's go ahead and delete this parameter here. Now, I'm going to go ahead and get back to my prompt here and then we're going to go ahead and run this command. Now it's going to give you a lot of output, but what you want to make a note of here is the instance ID. So go ahead and copy that to your clipboard. Next, we're going to allocate another elastic IP address and associate it with this instance. So to do that, we'll do another AWS EC2 allocate address, just like that. Then to associate the EIP with the instance, we're going to do an AWS EC2 associate dash address dash dash instance dash ID. And we're going to go ahead and paste in the instance ID here for the allocation ID. We of course want to take the allocation ID for the elastic IP we just allocated and paste that in here. Go ahead and execute this. And if it works, you should get an association ID. So now the instance that we just launched has an elastic IP address associated with this to view this. Let's go ahead and do an AWS EC2 describe dash addresses. And then for the allocation IDs parameter, we're just going to go ahead and paste in that EIP allocation ID, run this. And there you can see the instance ID and the public IP address. So this is good. Now, if you want to log into the instance and play around with it, you're going to need to modify the instances security group rules accordingly. We are not going to do that here, but we are going to take a close look at security groups a bit later when we deploy our fully functional web application. 
By the way, one of the ways AWS protects the reliability of its network infrastructure, including your public VPCs, is through a service called AWS Shield Standard, which detects and prevents distributed denial of service or DDoS attacks. DDoS attacks work by sending thousands and thousands of packets per second to a single internet-facing server with the intention of overwhelming it or making it crash so that nobody can use it. All right, for now, let's go ahead and terminate this instance. To do that, it's very easy. All we gotta do is issue an AWS EC2 terminate-instances command. And I'm gonna go ahead and grab the instance ID here and paste it in and execute. And you can see here that the current state is shutting down, so it's terminating. And finally, we need to release the Elastic IP address. So to do that, we're gonna go ahead and take the allocation ID from just a moment ago, copy that, paste it right here, and then execute the EC2 release dash address command. Now, the instance must be fully terminated before we can release the Elastic IP address. So if you get this error, all you gotta do is wait a few moments and try again. And no output means that the address has been released, so we will not be charged for it any longer.